it's Olivia and welcome back to Live in Literature. Thank you so much for all the likes and comments I received on my last few videos and if you have not seen them yet, feel free to head on over to my channel to check them out. Stop promoting your own channel in the comments. Okay guys, well I am super excited because this week I am headed to the beach. I am so excited because I am literally just going to get my beach read on. I am going to read tons of books while I'm there. Swim in the ocean and get super, super tan, and I am super, super excited. I know, you're all jealous. Mm -hmm. Jealous? Yeah, and oh, so really? now I think I know exactly who she- Alright, sweetheart, you think you have something to- <laughs> I am not jealous! But because I'm headed to the beach this week, I thought it might be fun to talk about our favorite pirate book recommendations, or pirate novels. Drink up, me hearty Joe ho now, pirate novels, what do I think of them? I love a good seafaring adventure. I think it's so fun. I love books that take place on boats because I feel like it's, it can be good for a lot of different reasons. One, pirates are sexy. I love you. There I said it, pirates are hot. Like when you have a swashbuckling pirate with tan skin and like semi longish hair, oof. Hot. They are hot, 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 hot. Nothing's better than a bad boy who breaks the rules to save his own crew. Right? Am I right, ladies? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Girls, come on! But another reason why I also love pirate books is because it forces people on a small space to basically, like, either get along or kill each other. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. <laughs> So in those instances of pirate books where basically like people don't like each other, there's like forced proximity and I love forced, prox forced proximity in books. Forced proximity forces people to like get together, get each other's faces, and sometimes like make out each other's faces, but also sometimes just like freak the freak out. Yeah, whatever you say. So I have a couple of pirate book recommendations that I want to give to you guys today. And so let's get started. So before we get started into this video, I just want to give you guys a full disclosure. Full disclosure, I actually haven't read as many pirate novels as I thought I had. I am shocked! Shocked! Which is shocking to me because it feels like I've read tons. I feel like I'm like, oh yeah, I can list you hundreds of pirate novels that I've read. I love a good pirate book. It's great. But now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of books that contain like pirate aspects are just like aspects of a book. They're never like a whole book based on like seafaring adventures and things like that. So I don't have very many like true pirate novels, but I'm gonna recommend the best ones that I can to you, the ones that I've enjoyed the most. I HATE PIRATES! One of the first swashbuckling adventures that I'm going to recommend is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. All the Stars and Teeth is a great swashbuckling novel. It is all about seafaring. It is all about the sexy pirate bastion. It sounds good to me! To once again give you guys a quick plot summary, we have a princess, a moron, part of a kingdom, controls different magic, Something goes wrong with the magic during her celebration ceremony, has to escape onto a pirate ship with Bastion, and we basically have one of my favorite tropes, which is a group of people going to do a thing. And this book has that trope. We have Bastion and his crew, which is a couple of other different characters. We have Vitea, who's a mermaid. So fun. <laughs> and Farrick, who's actually Amora's fiance, who ends up sneaking away onto the ship. Super cute. Well, I like it. We have Bastion, Amora, Vitea, and Farrick. And it's a group of people forced into close proximity. Two best friends in a room. They might kiss. Yes, we will. What? Yes, we will. And it's a super fun seafaring adventure. Most of it takes place on the boat. We have a super sexy pirate, just like I promised. We got Bastion, who's... <laughs> And it's still just a really fun, like, swashbuckling read, so I hope that you all enjoy this one. Now I have two more to recommend right here that are both from the same author. We have Fable and Namesake by Adrian Young. And both of these books I've reviewed within the past six months because I've read both of them within the past six months. Well, obviously. So the first one is Fable, and this is all about our main protagonist, Fable, who gets left on an island by her father. And ten years later, she's basically trying to get back to him and get aboard a sneak aboard a ship. So she sneaks aboard Captain West's ship and basically buys her way to get back to her father so that she can prove that she sh he should never abandon her. And it's a great seafaring novel. In this one, we get a little bit more of, like, that crew-crew aspect. Like, I feel like in the, in, um, in All the Stars and Teeth, it's more about, like, 
the the what's going on and like the the plot stuff and the descriptions with this one it's more about our characters this one's more character driven it's more about the crewmates there's a lot of really fun crew members on this in, in on the ship in this book now back to jolly pirate crew but we have a really fun crew of people who um i get super attached to very quickly and as does fable our main character she's a fun spicy like very like rigorous has been through a lot of crap in her life kind of protagonist and she really just goes for it in this novel and for that i really like her for it but she's totally making a play for my heart and in the second one we have namesake and i'm not going to give you guys too much on this one but basically just to say that the story just continues with fable and her crew this one starts off with a little bit of a bang with a couple of crewmates uh basically one of our crewmates going missing and basically trying to find them and then like overcoming all these trials to get together and then eventually like stop the bad guy kind of thing. So overall, two really fun swashbuckling seafaring novels. Once again, both in the YA, YA genre, but both really fun to read. I recommend both of them highly. Next one I want to recommend is a book I don't currently have with me, but I have read and it is called Sea Fire by Natalie C. Parker. And Sea Fire is an all-female crew. <laughs> Let's go, girls. We have our main girl, uh, Caldonia, or Saldonia. We have Caldonia, who is the captain of the Morris Navis, an all-female crew of women on a ship. And if we don't love some bad A woman energy... Man, I feel like a woman. We just love it. We love some good bad A woman energy. And this crew of girls has it. They all run this ship and it's pretty amazing. Basically, Erica Fair has like taken over the ocean and has ruined the lives of a lot of these girls that are basically kind of like refugees that Caldonia has taken onto her ship. It's the hard knock life for us. It's the hard knock life for us. And one day, one of these, um, they, they basically run into a different ship and they find this guy who gets to they, they rescue this guy from this, um, the ship. And he basically might be the key to taking down Erica Fair. Their rule this whole time on this, the ship of the Morris Navis has been to keep their heads low and to stay away from Eric. But now is their chance to basically take revenge and get back at him for what he did to them all those years ago. And to all these women that he's basically taking families, friends, and loved ones from them. Overall, a super fun read. Very pro-woman, which like, we love some pro-woman stuff. And we love some sexy female pirates because also... Just as good, just as hot as a male pirate is, so is a female pirate. Because we love some bad A women who take what they want. Look, it's time we stop trying to be so perfect and be who we really are. We're crazed, angry, sweaty animals. We're not unicorns, we're women. And we take what we want! Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. This book does have some good romance in it. It does have like a nice little spark, a little taste, a little flavor of some romance, which I really enjoy because I just need that in my life. The book is very good, has very in compelling characters and a really fun story that like grabs by the horns. So I recommend that one to everyone. The last swashbuckling adventure that I want to recommend to you guys is called Scavenge the Stars by Tara Sim. And Scavenge the, Sh Scavenge the Stars is another book that I don't have her with me, but that I absolutely loved and I have read before. Tara Sim creates an incredible world about a girl named Maya who is basically aboard a debtor ship. And one day she sees a man out at sea who's drowning and she rescues this man. And thinking that this basically by rescuing this guy and bringing him onto the debtor ship that she's imprisoned to is going to make her sentence even longer on the debtor ship. It turns out, it actually ends up, this man turns out to be very wealthy and it ends up turning out that he gives her a new identity, lots of money, and sends her onto this land of Moray, which is filled with a lot of intrigue, a lot of gambling, and a lot of like uh, political like intrigue amongst the, amongst the seafaring families. Anyways, it turns out this young man that she rescues could be the arch nemesis of the man who ruined her life. And so she's trying to take down this guy's dad, but doesn't know that it's, his, that it's his dad in the process. And so there's a lot of, like, political intrigue and romance, and she really comes to realize, like, who can she trust? Can she trust this guy, or really is he just, like, full of crap, essentially? That's a lot of information to get in 30 seconds. <laughs> so this one's a really interesting, this one's kind of like Seafaring Adventure meets Monte Carlo, where it's kind of like uh, a lot of, like, high stakes, like, gambling and a lot of political intrigue as well as some sea the seafaring aspects which i really like i think that's really interesting this book does have a has uh, i think three more uh, two more in the series so i think it's a three book three book series but oh i read the first one really enjoyed it i think that's a really compelling story and that um amaya is a very compelling character and that um it does create for some really cool like political intrigue say political intrigue one more time oh my gosh it goes on during this book so if you're looking for a good a good uh, pirate swashbuckling romance, but also most of it takes place on land, but has a lot to do with the aspects of the sea, this one's going to be one for you to read. And that is all the pirate novels that I have to recommend to you. Once again, like I said, I actually haven't read as many pirate novels as I thought, or at least I can't remember if I have read them. 
But if you guys have any fun swashbuckling pirate adventure books for to recommend to me, feel free to leave them down in the comments. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Living Literature YouTube channel. I'm so grateful for you guys. I'm so glad I get to go to the beach this week. Wish me luck and let's see what I read while I'm there. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Hey guys, just wanted to give you guys a quick little disclaimer here at the end of the video. I will, there will not be a new video next week because like as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to the beach, but there will be a video the week after that that I will upload. And so just keep a lookout for that. But thanks so much for watching.